Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Today's Clip Studio Paint webinar will be on tips on painting and drawing stylized portraits in Clip Studio Paint. It will be presented by Mel Milton. Before we begin the webinar, there are some housekeeping items that we'd like to review with you. The webinar will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. The Q&A session will be during the last 15 minutes of the webinar. Attendees can ask questions in the GoToWebinar question box right away. Due to time constraints, not all questions will be answered. The webinar will be recorded. The recording will be shared on social media and will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees. Today's panelists are Fahim Niaz, myself, Joanna Brower from Celsius, and Mel Milton, your presenter. For those of you who are joining us for the first time and have never heard of Clip Studio Paint, Clip Studio Paint is your all-in-one solution for stunning, ready to publish illustrations, comics, manga, and animations. To learn more about Clip Studio Paint, please visit us at clipstudio.net forward slash en or at graphicsly.com. And with that, we'll be passing the reins of the webinar over to Mel Milton, where he will discuss his tips on painting and drawing stylized portraits in Clip Studio Paint. Thank you. All right, thanks for he, uh, Joanne. Uh, I'd like to uh, give a special thanks to um, Graphicsly, uh, Celsius, and Wacom for sponsoring this and get the opportunity to talk about something that I uh, hold dearly to myself, um, you know, my fun and, and uh, excitement. Uh, so I apologize because I'm going to be really excited throughout this, but uh, super nervous. So uh, with that said, I will go ahead and share some of my my work uh, while I um, give a brief introduction of who I am. Um, for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Mel Milton. I've been in the creative industry for over 20 years. Um, I've done everything from t-shirt design, web design, uh, concept art, children's books, uh, but most notably, uh, I was a character animator at Disney Interactive. Um, currently, <clears throat> I am a freelance illustrator and I teach figure drawing at Utah Valley University. So um, some of the things that you're seeing um, are, you know, this, what, what I'm showing is, is what I'm, I'm known for is, is my Dukes. So this is not really something that um, I just, I, it's not like these are work pieces. These are, you know, my, my Dukes, okay, let me back up. What a Duke is, is um, it's short for Dukey, meaning poop or crap. So um, when I went off on my own, uh, to work for my for myself, um, this is like my um, jogging or my exercise is just to, you know, take a small subject and not be so um, caught up in perfection. Just you know, an easy way to teach myself. So when when asked to do this, um, I had a hard time deciding on what subject to talk about because um, I'm fairly new to Clip Studio. So <clears throat> so. Uh, I've been using um, Adobe Photoshop for pretty much my whole career, uh, and so making that change to, to Clip Studio was uh, quite daunting because, again, I wasn't really happy with uh, going to the subscription base with Adobe, and uh, I'd heard good things about uh, Clip Studio, so um, giving it a whirl. Uh, I was really impressed, uh, you know, so uh, I'm, I'm happy that I made the change. Um, so, and then, you know, the reason why I chose this subject is, is you know, um, just the face alone there. I think that's where, uh, most storytelling starts, you know, uh, you know, you get to know a character through their face, you get, you know, a little bit about, um, um, emotions from their face, you know, it's usually the first place. So to me, it's always had, uh, I've always been interested in that. And so, uh, uh, me, I always try to capture like all the subtleness, you know, and then and push those extremes, uh, just so I can learn uh, a bunch of stuff. So that's what this webinar is basically going to be about: is is how I go through the process of um, um, using Clip Studio um, uh, in my workflow. So <clears throat> let's get to it. I'm sorry, I could go on forever. So. Um, Catch me and drawing and, and, and talking at the same time is, you know, not my forte. <laughs> so, um, 
So I'm going to start off with the basics and kind of explain what it is that I look at. Um, I am not formally trained. And so a lot of the ways that I learned was intuitive and the basics I skipped for, for many, 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 many years. And, you know, again, I go back to my past self and go, uh, that's the dumbest move you could ever make. Go learn the basics. Um, but again, I, I, you know, wanted to rush and get to the good stuff. So um, I'm just going to briefly go over what's in my mind with the basics. Um, and there's lots of great tutorials out there. But, you know, th this is not like end all be all way of thinking. It's just um, I look at it as is my foundation. Um, and I try to keep things simple, simple as humanly possible, because I'm very ADD. And so by keeping it simple, um, I can add more things and have a checklist. So I think of things in three. So, so first off, um, um, as I look, uh, you know, things like uh, the space between the eyes um, is one eye length, right? And and I use the sphere to, you know, grab my plumb lines and and have that that eye spot ready. And then, you know, um, from that sphere, sphere, you know, um, from the eyes, the corner of the eyes, you know, you get the ears. And then I hang my jaw on the bottom of that sphere. Now, you know, I've seen other ways, but, you know, this is basically what I'm thinking um, when I'm even looking over my reference. I look for these um, main features. So, <clears throat> again, when I think of things in threes, okay, so if I were to practice, let me go ahead and practice. So what I would do is I would, um, you know, practice this for a long time just this right here, getting um, varying angles and learning how to read the form. Now, again, just even doing circles and trying to close them up and getting neat. Again, I haven't warmed up, but this is what warm up is. All right. I think of how many varying ways can I, can I look at the form? And it's just like get the gesture, right? So that's the basic thing. And then, and then, um, the other two things as I do the construction, you know, um, ear will come off the side, right? And then again, I'll think of the ear, add the ear where it needs to be. Just general placement to get um, feeling, right? I don't, I'm not trying to go per perfect. I'm just trying to get an understanding of the forms. And then the other thing is, <clears throat> again, is add that jaw. So I'll add the jaw. Right, I'll add the jaw in in varying ways, you know, just so I can it can get an idea of what I want the form to do, right? Where it's at. And again, this is just my practicing warming up. I will, you know, get my mind right with um, where I'm placing things, and then I, you know, that's my main three things. Sorry, that's my main three things: the head, the ears, and the and the jaw pretty much fill out the structure of the head. And then when I go in and think about the eyes, nose and mouth, I think of like this diamond. It's just easy for me to, um, you know, where the eyebrows start is the top of the diamond. The corners, <clears throat> the corners of the eyes is that one point. And then when I go down to the bottom, that's the bottom, <coughs> excuse me, that's the bottom of the mouth, you know, bottom of the lip. So I'll take that point and take it to the bottom of the lip. And again, this is not about, it's not, I'm not trying to get anything right or wrong. I'm just trying to feel out <clears throat> where my forms are, you know, and then kind of make it muscle memory um, to, uh, you know, so that when I get to placing things, um, this is not something that I actually think about, you know, it's just there, you know, in my mind to make sure that, oh, did I tackle that if, if, if something didn't measure out right? Um, you know, to go back and think of, right? <clears throat> and then again, like I said, you know, do the eyes, eyes one, 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 one apart, then I'll, from the, from the middle of the eye, you know, is where the bridge of the nose starts. <clears throat> <clears throat> and again, there's the bottom of my mouth. And so, you know, I'll split the difference, same thing, different angle, you know, eye, and, you know, my nose, and then to the bottom is my mouth and then following the shapes. So, you know, doing practices like these, I did them over, 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 and over and again. It's not the most exciting and most fun thing, but it, it would help me to <coughs> feel the form, not be so flat. 
and and think of angles and, and think more um you know more is what i'm trying to do because then that shape like i said once i have that shape you know the jaw the jaw could be squashed a little bit right so i could take that jaw squash it a little bit or i can elongate that jaw but you know it's i think that you know the head same thing this round circle part you know i could sit and go okay <clears throat> i can move this line down to get a different feeling and say that's the cheeks right there and that the eyes play off of that now we have that baby kind of feel right it's like smaller smaller proportions so <clears throat> you know and i'll keep the same things in mind but it, you know i can bend those shapes to whatever it is that i'm trying to achieve <clears throat> um other things to keep in mind especially like when we're, again we're talking stylized and and so what what i try to do is get most of this stuff um, understood so it becomes muscle memory so that in my mind i can pick and choose the things that i'm trying to recall so again keeping things in threes is easy for me to um to say okay did i nail these things move on to the next spot and again moving on even like okay if i start with the eyes right i always think of like pivots right um on, on how an eye will pivot so you know uh you say you have your eye like this you have the top you have the bottom and here's the pupil here's the eyebrow right okay i can even keep that shape but again thinking in threes i'll think of how can i uh you know change the way it feels so uh keeping it threes it's you know i'll change the angle i don't know what i'm doing hopefully i didn't do anything wrong <laughs> all right so i can change the angle of that eye to give it a different feel even though i can keep the shape the same you know the eye will feel lots different just changing the angle <clears throat> you know and, and keeping it in threes because again if i go uh flat you know, angled one way, angled the other way. It's things that I can look for in my reference. I can sit and say, okay, uh, you know, I see this specific angle. It might be uh, just a little bit, it might be uh, a lot, depending on, again, making that stylized choice. I start with these as a base and then I can go in between, but keeping it in threes as I construct it, uh, it's just easy as I go through to make sure that I hit the things that I want. Same thing with nose. If I do the nose, right, you can do a nose that's straight across, right? Or I can change the angle of, of how that nose goes and say go up, you know, it's a little bit more, you know, pointed up, you know, changing that angle. Or I can make it more that you don't even see the nostrils and it's more pointing down, right? So keeping it in those threes, um, you know, I can cycle through it um, to get that style. Again, it's just choices that I'm trying to make as I go through, um, you know, things that I can change. So I don't like to stick with reference. I like to take things and I go, okay, I see it's doing this. Where can I make choices and, and flourish on my own, right? So it's, to me, these kind of things are like, um, uh, Mary had a little lamb. Like you come in and it's like, uh, you know, you get the notes from Mary had a little, Mary had a little, and it's, you know, but you don't have to play it that way, right? You know, Mary had a little, land. you could, whatever, I'm not a terrible singer, but you can make it in a way that where you flourish, how long do you hold notes for? And so to me, it's like looking at your reference, these are ideas that I keep in my mind to be like, okay, where, where can I flourish? Where are things that I can make the decision? And uh, again, same thing with mouth, you know, I can make a, a mouth more straight across, right? <clears throat> and I can make, you know, change that angle and it, it changes the way that mouth looks. Same thing with the other way, right? You know, these kind of three variations just from the pivot, um, how to pivot those angles in, in your face um, is, is uh, again, keeping it in threes as I go through it. These are decisions that I can make really quick because I go, okay, one, two, three, next, one, two, three, next, one, two, three, next. What did I miss? What am I missing? And within portraits, um, you know, there's so many decisions that you make, right? So um, especially like what type of portrait is, you know, is it a caricature? Is it realism? Is it a candid? Is it simple? Is it abstract? There's so many 
um, decisions you can make that can be overwhelming. And I think a lot of people, you know, especially like me, when I looked at it, it's like, it seems like portraits are simple, but to really evoke an emotion out of that portrait, you know, it's being mindful of things that uh, evoke emotions in you. And so how can you express those things? So keeping a checklist and keeping it simple, um, you can always make sure that, you know, you're getting your idea across. And again, um, <clears throat> as I'm thinking through that simple, um, you know, keeping it simple, again, um, small, medium, large, I always think of the idea of what I'm trying to convey. What's the most important? What's the second most important? And what's the third most important? So um, <clears throat> as, as I pour over, so we'll go, hopefully that wasn't I'm trying to be quick so that when I get to the demo part of it, um, that it makes a little bit more, I mean, cohesive as I look through my reference and I talk about it. So let me go ahead and, and kind of <clears throat> show you um, along the lines, like what it is that I'm thinking over uh, over the reference. So I, I, right now, okay, I picked this reference uh, because um, if you've been following me on social media, I've been on this retro, um, uh, I like that retro painting, old school um, um, painterly like retro stuff. So I've been taking a uh, black and whites like this and, and converting them into uh, uh, superheroes, you know, <laughs> you know, just giving my take on a, uh, you know, retrofitting uh, superheroes. So, um, <clears throat> so um, first thing is that I like, as, as I look at it, you know, what intrigued me about this, this picture, uh, I mean, it's right in the eyes specifically, but, you know, again, I look for that eye container with the diamond, right? Um, and again, how it wraps around the face, you know, watching that form around the face, not just keeping everything just straight across, but, you know, I wrap that form around the face. And again, that diamond, it could be twisted. Um, I'm just putting it here because this is the first thing that I look for, right? Especially because again, in the face, you know, that's, um, you know, this is where most of the attention is going to be. So, uh, then the other things that I start thinking about again, when you have that kind of contrast, um, contrast adds to a really good story. You know, it's that conflict. Something's fighting against something else and it creates that tension. So a lot of the things that I think through, uh, again, uh, keeping it simple, I have a simple versus complex side. You know, I'll look for something that's along those lines that I could uh, exaggerate or um, play up on, you know, because again, to me, um, this is framing the face really well and it's making the, the features inside that face. Um, um, it, it has a lot of appeal to me. And again, this is, I'm basing this off of just what I'm going through personally as I look over my reference. You know, and then I also start looking for uh, gestures and movement. You know, how am I moving around that picture? What are the things, why, why was I so drawn to this? And it, you know, there's a secondary, right? So we have the face that's there you know, that, that we know, that would probably be my most important focal point is the face. And then everything else is supplementing it. So it's like, what can I do that can um, supplement the idea? And again, her hair is playing this nice frame, right? You got this nice framing, but it's not just, just you know, it's it's got this flow to it. And especially like everything else is supplemental and there's all these fun things that make your eye dance around the page. And so to me, uh, you know, and again, that's just, things that uh, I, I like to feel out of a picture. Why, as I'm looking through the picture, why Why is it that I, you know, I, I really like this, the shapes? Um, um, what, what is drawing? What are the things that are making me want to put down a first line or a first shape? What are those things, right? And so it's analyzing those things <clears throat> and again, making them in a way that, okay, what was the most interesting part you know, and then make that your focal point. What is the second most interesting part? You know, to me, uh, the hair is secondary, but you could spend all your time and put all the detail in the hair. And if, if you put too much, you can take away from what the face is doing, what you're trying to convey. So again, by having that, that, that simple, um, you know, what's my most important, what's my second most important, what's my third most important, and then keeping it there, um, then I can sit and say, uh, oh, like I'm tinkering around in the background over here. Um, but is that really important to me? And currently I'm like, that's not what drew me into the picture. And to have a background, it's great. But again, 
if if the background, you know, what level is that background uh, mean to you, right? And so, um, and so again, that's like always having that third for me, because again, I'm all over the place, but being able to go, okay, what is that most important thing? Okay, go back to that, make sure you nail that and, and everything else is like, um, you know, uh, sugar on, uh, frosting on the cake, right? And then I start thinking light direction, you know, um, again, I'm keeping this black and white because there's so many other things that can be thought of when you're, when you're looking at, and, uh, again, uh, color is another, um, uh, is another feature that, um, you know, you've got a bazillion and, uh, one ways of making decisions, but again, it's looking at it and, and observing, you know, what drew you to it. So, um, but again, it's, I always take the same kind of thinking when doing colors, you know, warm, cool, and your mid-tone, right? And so same thing with black and white. I think light, dark, and, uh, you know, uh, medium, you know, tones. <clears throat> and so keeping those things in threes is easier for me to do that. So as I, as I pour over it. So for this demo, just because time-wise, I figured it'd be easier for me to um, just stick with the, the black and white and show you how I'm making my decisions. Uh, because again, there's so many things that you can learn from just a face alone. Again, um, I like to think gesturally. I love the movement. You know, and a lot of the times it's like, um, you know, especially like when we're using ref, when I use reference, I try not to stick, uh, uh, be a stickler about proportions. More so is, is that, you know, am I getting movement? Am I getting, um, you know, the texture? You know, is there a lot of textures? Is where it needs to be? And again, do they supplement all the things that I'm trying to do? So <clears throat> there's the primer to all of it, right? Just so that you can see beforehand. I'm, I, you know, I'm sure that I rushed really quickly over that, but I wanted to get a feel because again, when I was first learning, um, I wasn't as mindful. I just went into it. And, and so when I went back to the basics, it was learning how to simplify things that made sense to me and having that checklist. Because again, most of these kind of drawings, you know, it's, it's not really for anybody else but myself. And so I also had to take in consideration, you know, what are my goals with this, you know, doing this kind of stuff. And for the most part, this is just seeing and listening to myself. These, these, kind, of, um, these kind of practices that I've been doing are more for me to hear myself. I, you know, it's, it's uh, again, I call them poop, but after I finish, I celebrate the idea that I took the time to do something that I enjoy, right? And, um, take that pressure um, off to, you know, to take the perfectionist off and just enjoy it for what it is. Now, again, you know, if somebody asks you to do, you know, for money, it changes the way you think about it. So always going back and listening to how you, um, how you feel about, uh, about what you're trying to accomplish and having that goal of, of what does it mean? What does that, it will keep you, it's not that the frustration will ever go away, but you know, you can go easier on yourself, you know? And so again, when I, I said like this demo, I'm sitting here going, Oh, I want people to learn. But again, you know, it's like, I know that I just need to shift into a place where it's, um, you know, where I find value and to share the best of my ability. All right. So as we go into this demo, I kind of already blocked out just cause I knew I'm like, um, I've timed this out a couple of times and, and again, trying to talk and, and draw at the same time, I'm, I'm not as efficient. <laughs> so, okay, so taking all that into consideration, again, there's so many different ways a face can play out. And so to me, I got messed up in the early on because I go, majority of all that crap, I don't, I don't see it as predominant, you know? I don't see that average face as average as I thought it should be, you know? And so um, one of the reasons why I never really tended to uh, learn the basics is because I, I was like, I couldn't see it, um, real world. And then, um, but now it makes sense to have a place to start from. So if you're not starting from the beginning, slow down, take the time to learn it. Right. Because again, that's where confidence comes from. And a lot of times people are like, I want to get fast or I want to get really, um, confident in these things. It's understanding, uh, that, that the basics and having a solid foundation to work from that gives you that kind of confidence. And so, uh, you know, a lot of people are like, Hey, I want to work faster. Um, 
you know, really it's, it's, it's not really even working faster. It's being confident to lay the things down the way you want to and uh, be all right, move on to the next thing. So as you can see here, I've kind of blocked out the hair into the basic shapes and I've brought in this, um, I've brought in this uh, kind of guideline to show me um, where I'm going to start hanging things from, especially like from the eyes is where I'm going to, you know, where I would start laying things down. But uh, first thing is, is I hadn't played into um, what her mid-tone is. So um, I'll go in and I'll pick my, you know, about 50% gray, and that'll be my, my base tone, and I'll work from there. So I try, especially like on black and whites, I try to stay away, oops, try to stay away from, um, from using blacks and whites all the way right off the bat, right? So most of the stuff that I, I try to do is, um, and again, I'm using like a flat brush. So, okay, so let me talk about brushes for a little bit because I know there's a lot of people that want to, you know, hey, what brushes are you using? Um, I like to handle, especially like for this one, I like to handle it like, um, like, uh, like painting, right? I'll, I'll think about painting and I, I don't like a real round tip. I like a brush tip. Right. And then the other thing is, is I like um, um, more of a dry brush. So. Um, so. Uh, with the dry brush, again, um, the reason why I like a dry brush um, more so is that I don't like everything super smooth and clean and everything like that. I like I like to be able to see strokes, especially because it starts showing you like the form, like, you know, as I go. Okay, I'll sample from one area is what I do. I sample, and this is how I blend. But I'll follow along, like, like feel what the face is doing, not just lay it down. I'll find a direction and feel it, and 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 um, follow the forms, right? And then I'll look at what's going on with the reference, and and see how I can continue to follow those forms. So again, uh, I'm taking the things that I already know. Like uh, again, here's my here's my uh, thing that's in my head. I, I'm not right, really looking at it, but I just just for placement sake, right? And then I'm looking at how things are wrapping around the head, not just taking and going flat, but feeling the form and wrapping it around the head, right? And again, this is that stage where you know I'm not really trying to get everything perfect. And again, I'm working really small. So here's the other thing. The reason why I like working small like this is it there's at some point I won't dig in so far in um, and lose that um, block in, you know, making sure that I'm tackling things that um, I'm trying to convey, keeping it in bigger block shapes, right? <clears throat> so as I, as I continue to block, I'm looking for shapes. Um, so like, in here in the hair where it's much darker i'll start blocking those kind of shapes in and again it's just here like the you know it's like the shadows under here are really much darker and give that form you know give that hair some volume is what i love about it right you know close into here um there's a lot of uh fun things and again things like this where it's you know um where it kind of blends into there. That's why I like the the the, the textured dry brush, is that it will, um, you know, it will it will give me that uh, movement that I'm looking for. All right. Another thing that I really like, um, especially like with Clip Studio, I and other programs, I wasn't really um, too fond of it. I mean, I liked it, but is the it's the uh the lasso fill brush and what i really like about the lasso fill is it's it just feels good right so um so say like i need to carve out um other shapes you know it just i can go in and still keep shapes and block out so this is the other way so again when taking on there's not like one right way to start a drawing sometimes i will use just the you know, this, this lasso tool to block out the shapes because it's easier to feel the shapes, you know, with the, with the lasso tool. 
like I can I can really quickly lay down shapes with the lasso tool, right? you know, get feelings, you know, get everything where I need to, if I need to move anything, I'm not really, uh, you know, at this point, I'm not really invested into it. Everything is just kind of like getting things blocked to a place, uh, like a good point, right? I can, bam, go in and, especially like, again, for the hair, I could have used that as well, you know, come in and see these shapes in here and be more organic, but yet, um, you know, block things in really quick. And I, again, I'm not trying to be, hey, let me get that exactly the way it is. I'm just mainly going over and trying to get that feeling, you know, the general feeling. Um, you know, I'm not all the way trying to make exactly the same picture. All right, so the darkness in here, see it's like blocked. Even though there's like that fade, you know, I block that in, block this in, it's really dark right here. So I'll take that same thing, block this in. And then I'll take my, uh, you know, a textured brush, you know, and this is where we talk, we, you know, where we get to like edge control, right? So I like using, um, you know, um, let let the pressure sensitivity of the program um, build it in, right? To soften those edges up and give that gradation the way I want. But it also gives me the opportunity to, um, you know, again, try to keep that form. Like I can see it with, um, as I build up, I can see the direction of, you know where it's going and I've exaggerated a little bit but again I'll take a look and I'm like at this point fix things in a way that I want to fix them right go on start working in like uh, gradations of the how the light is falling onto the face and the light here is really subtle so um, so my thing is is by um, by doing things over and over again, um, then you have the ability to focus more on certain aspects of a drawing, you know. So like the measuring part, I don't think about it as much. So now I'm at a point where it's okay, you know, like, how's that light playing? And I can think about that, you know, without um, getting too overboard, you know, and what's my important part. Again, I don't like going in really close you know, for my blocking, I'll look at stuff and, and, and again, um, at this size, just getting the gist of everything. Cause I, you know, I won't spend all my time here, you know, I'll start to, uh, beef that up. I'll blow this up and then I'll start going into my details and then try more to steer clear of just everything about the reference i won't give it up a hundred percent but you know i'll i'll start trying to wrangle it in take the take this on its own and and then try to make more of uh expand more on like my own choices and what i'm i'm thinking of but uh another thing is that i really like about um clip studio again i i normally work with my tab mate and so all my key, like the tab me was like the most beautiful thing that I've ever come across because I am a keyboard shortcut fiend. And I know inside of Clip Studio, one of the key keyboard shortcuts, you know, to zoom in and out, I get, can I, what is it, control? Oops. What do I got going on? I don't even know which one I'm doing. So my keyboard shortcut, I know like there's this control plus and minus to zoom in and zoom out. But I notice on some occasions I'll, I'll, I'll hit the minus without hitting the control and it'll turn. And it took me forever. It drew me insane because I was like, what What just happened? Then I had to find, how do I turn it the other way? And that would be the uh, apostrophe. So, <laughs> so again, um, Clip Studio, the tab mate is really nice because it puts all the shortcut keys there. It's, it's like I don't have to go to my keyboard. So if you ever want to give that a whirl, 
that is, but I'm not using it for this demonstration. But what I do love um, in the navigator is the ability to flip, you know, so, um, you know, that it'll flip everything, you know. Uh, in Photoshop, I ended up having to make a keyboard shortcut with um, my tab mate. I have it built in, but, you know, to be able to see it and it stays in the navigator the way it needs to or, or flipping it up just to check, you know, is it looking right? Um, is a great way to, to make sure that, um, you know, things are proportionately the way you want them. Not like, again, not perfect, but, you know, the way you want them. So, yeah, I'm probably going to dig with this a little bit more. I've dinked with it a couple of times thus far. And Okay. So again, when we get that contrast, um, you know, when I start getting into the darker, darkers, you know, I want to leave those for areas um, that, um, you know, that I want to, want them to be there for, right? So it's making the decisions like where where can I create that um, draw the eye? So it's like a magic show. And with that being said, you know, you want to lead, you know, the eye to where you want them to see. And and then the rest is like, um, you know, it's supplementary, but right, it's like um, you don't want to, you know, um, sit and talk about what your other hand is doing, right? You want them to, to show, see the magic. So that's why by taking um, um, and making decisions on purpose is basically guiding or where do I want to guide the eye. So again, um, I try not to use the, the darks until I really want to get there and where am I going to put them on purpose, not just use them all the way up and then scale down, but use those darks and highlights because, you know, to me, that's where all the fun is, is when you get to the, the highlights and the in the shadows, right? So again, I'm not used to <laughs> drawing and talking. Uh, so hopefully any of what I'm saying, it, it's, it's making sense that somebody understands what I'm talking about. All right. But this is what I do. It's just um, analyzing, uh, forever analyzing in what ways um, I do a lot of sampling. Right? I'll sample what I already have, especially like with colors, because then it gives me variations um, a whole lot more. Especially like when using a uh, using a drier brush, you know, because you get that grit and noise in there. That um, you know, it'll it'll give me um, that those feelings that I'm looking for. Okay, and I'm probably zooming in too much on this already. And it happens. That's why I said it's like um, I shouldn't zoom in this way. You know, I usually try to keep out and move things around. So say say things like this where it's like I could keep going on the eyes, but this is probably a little lower than what I'd want. So here's the chance to move them right before I've invested so much. I move them up. Enter, deselect, and that was even more terrible. Maybe not so much. And re redo that. So I did like them moving up a little bit, but um, not a whole lot. All right, coming up on. So, anyways, I'm gonna. I would keep going. I'm gonna go on to the next part. So I have this one that I had ended up working on that I moved to. So I would get to this stage and then um, let me flatten this up. And then this is where I would get into, uh, into uh, oops, enlarging it and then getting into the uh, refining, right? So now, you know, now that I'm like, uh, I want to get into details and be able to refine and get everything like uh, buttery smooth, I would take this, oops, I'm just going to paste it on another layer because I had it with the same with the reference. And then I will scale this up. Oops, grab the wrong one. Okay. 
scale this up so now I can get into the details. What? Long one. There. I'll collapse these two. And I did another one. Again, you can see here's another one that I did. You know, I got into the 45 minute range. Um, and that looks different than this one, right? You know, each time there's other things that I see. So even sometimes doing something multiple times, you know, is a chance to be able to listen to how, to see how your, uh, how your thinking evolves over doing it multiple times. Because again, I'm not really trying to stay super um, strict into my uh, reference. I'm mainly trying to get that like retro feel. So I'm pulling this one because it, it has more of the feel that I was looking for. Um, more of the feel that I was looking for, you know, that retro feel. So now this is where I would take it and I go, okay, um, let me start refining things and adding personal, uh, personal decisions. So, um, so one thing like, um, so I would say like, it would be, oh, geez, apologies again. <laughs> All right. Come on, you can do it. Okay. All right, now that I've resized this, don't touch anything. Sometimes it'll just snap back. So, so at this point, it's like, where else can I make decisions, you know, when I'm refining? You know, so I'll look and I'll go, uh, uh, say, like, here where this shadow is, right? I mean, it's pretty solid black, right? If you look, there's there's a little bit of bounce light going in there. And to me, this is a place where it's, again, where, you know, in the shadows, you can exaggerate in the shadows as well. Everywhere is, is a place you have the ability to um, um, exaggerate. So, you know, so like I said, um, I, like a, I like that kind of core shadow and then it softens up inside, right? And so uh, I'll take that and I'll exaggerate a little bit more than it needs to be. I just... It just looks nice to me. I love it. <laughs> I'm silly like that. But it's things like that where it's like, okay, now it's not that it's right or wrong. I mean, yeah, you can say, yeah, it's totally wrong, though. You know, but for me, um, I enjoy it. So it's like a spot that I can I can do that for, right? And then as I, as I get into details in the eyes, again, I got to go back to, you know, what is the important part? What am I really trying to get to? You know, and again, the eyes are what, you know, really drew me into this reference. So this is where I put a majority of my uh, my effort, right, is in here, right, to get that feel that I'm looking for. And again, by going now and going in with my darker darks, you know, it, it's, it gets those things to pop. And then, and then again, in the same front, getting those highlights now. So, like, if I go in and get into the, the highlights, you know, now we get uh, then. Then you start, you know, putting those things in a, in a in, on purpose. It's not like that's visibly there that you can see it, you know. But this is somewhere where you can exaggerate. You can say, okay, I'm going to exaggerate um, the feeling of that, right? <clears throat> Again. Um, as I, as I follow what the reference is, I'll see and I'll go, okay, uh, same thing. That highlight starts over here, kind of in here, and then I'll fade it out and follow the forms, have it wrap around. Think of the shape of that head, right? And again, I'm keeping it really rough at this stage, but, um, I am getting to the point where I'm refining things and things like, again, um, I love a dry brush. You know, especially like for these little um, happy accidents, you know, that I uh, like in here where the, the light kind of uh, blends the hair into the into the forehead. I love crap like that. That stuff just, ooh, and then leave it, right? Don't don't tinker with it anymore. Leave it. Leave that alone. You know, back in the day, I'd be like, oh, man, I got to get every little hair in there. No, no, no. Leave that crap. Get to the point where you feel comfortable with what you're what you're trying to accomplish, and so 
Um, again, one of the things I like to, you know, is to keep that brushy type feel, you know, and then again, getting into the highlights. Now I'll go in here and zoom into the places. And I'm all over the place if you haven't noticed. I'm all over the place. So I apologize because again, um, drawing and talking is not my forte. All right, so I'll grab that and again, find that, um, find that form and follow along the form. Don't just, you know, um, I don't just scrub that in there. There's that, that form. It's, it's, I, I try to follow the form underneath and feel it, feel it through. So, um, that it feels good. And you feel um, what the form is doing. All right. Same thing in here. There's this shape in here that I really like. And it's just there. And then soften certain areas up. All right. This is how I do it. It's just tinkering, a lot of tinkering, but always uh, in my mind going over, um, you know, like I said, feeling what the skull is doing underneath. Um, and, and again, it's um, exaggerate things uh, even more because this is going to be the darker side of it, you know, just like that ball. You know, if you were to shade a ball, you know, thinking of it. Um, because this is going to be away from the light, all right? Smoothing things out. Where are we at time? Are we good with time? I mean, you want to start asking questions? I think we're ready for uh, questions at this point. Sorry, so, hopefully it wasn't too terrible. No, it was fantastic, <laughs> uh, Mel. So um, I'll actually let I'll uh, Joanna jump in, and, and then uh, she'll ask her questions uh, right away. All right, Thanks, thank Joanna. you, Joanna. <laughs> okay, um, we have a ton of questions, so oh, let's start yeah. with the very basic, the uh, very basic ones. Uh, what is your setup? What what's your your drawing tablet, your computer, your Clip it. Studio version? Right, I am. Um, so the tablet version I'm using, I'm using a White Wacom uh, Mobile Studio Pro 16, um, and to to me, I, I mean, I I get this one asked a lot, like. Um, you know, is it better than the iPad or is it this and that? And the same thing with brushes, you know, the one that gets you the job done is the one that you, you know, um, I don't need to be mobile. So, um, the mobile studio pro 16 is quite large and, um, it's not like something I would tote around every day, but again, I don't go out very much. And so this at least gets me out of my office because if I go in my office, my family seems to lose their mind. Um, Clip Studio version, um, one of the reasons I, I went with the EX version because there's animating and I do want to get to a point to where, uh, you know, one of my loves is animating and I was super excited to see the, you know, that they had um, support for, uh, I think I did it, support for 2D animation and that, that they added, you know, being able to add sound clips and um, I know there was a previous webinar with Ruben Laura that I was all super excited about. Like, oh, animating in Clip Studio. So um, that's the reason why I bought it. Now, um, again, I look at, um, I, I, use, I use Photoshop for years and it's not like I hate Photoshop now. It's Photoshop still has that value for me, but again, um, for what I needed, uh, Clip Studio is so robust. And so I went with the EX version. It was a great deal. I came on sale. I can't remember what I got it for, but, um, you know, if you don't even care about the animation, it's getting the pro version is still so so robust, and there's such a huge built-in community for it that uh, that's what I really like. Truly, the uh, the um, community involved, and again, finding brushes for it is uh, quite simple. So uh, that's my setup, and again, I have the tab tab mate little little tab mate that's built for it, and again, it's pretty magical. Uh, I hope to do a video on it one day because I was 
I was so excited about it. <laughs> I was probably more excited than I needed to be about it. Because again, I'm a keyboard shortcut guy. So that's that. Did I miss anything? <laughs> I, no, I, no, sorry. perfect. Thank you. you um, awake. <laughs> <laughs> um, for, uh, further, for your for your starting out a portrait, like, um, what's your usual resolution for your canvas, and how many layers do you usually work with? All right. So, um, great question. Um, I usually, again, because I I I really never, um, you know, I never have it in. Like, I'm going to sell these things, or I'm going to make prints out of them but i'll usually stick to just regular paper size or an a4 size you know something that's eight and a half by 11 at 300 dpi so that if i need to i mean it's still it's printable but i'm not printing it at super large i'm not you know but i've been getting asked a lot more for prints and stuff like that so you know i probably work on a larger scale you know especially like if you were going to print I'd, you know maybe work on 11 by 17 and um you know 600 dpi i know that there's a lot of people that do that but again for me i you know i don't think much and i just want it to be like uh, the most natural feeling so again i'll usually use uh eight and a half by 11 to, uh at 300 dpi okay um you do like portraits are your your strength and if we look at your Instagram, that's that's a lot of what you do. Um, yeah. Do you always work from reference or do you also no. use work from your imagination? No, and again, because um, when I first started in art, um, like reference was the no-no. Like, um, again, I didn't start doing art until I was, uh, I mean, like actually trying to be like this professional artist until I was like 30. And when I got my foot into the studios, is when I finally saw that people used reference. And I thought, I felt cheated. I felt like I was lied to because I never used reference or, you know, I was wrong or I wasn't a real artist. And even back, going further back when I, you know, when I thought about being an artist, yeah, I mean, I remember when computers came into play and people were like, uh, you know, if you use computers, you're not a real artist. So there was all this dogma attached to uh, trying to learn. And so uh, to me, I use reference and again when i'm posting stuff up you know i'm only posting a sliver of what i'm doing because again i right now i'm currently learning blender and i'm learning sculpting and i'm learning uh, traditional painting and i'm learning you know going back and learning animation but the thing that i post up is just like my exercise so to me reference is like building that up you know because if there's somebody says you know they've never used reference i mean everything's built off of something else and again having a solid foundation is helpful because i don't know what light is doing and sometimes i don't know what color is doing and so grabbing reference is a great way of doing that now um you know like if i were to do work and it didn't call for reference you know i would i would grab up a bunch of stuff get it into my mind the feeling that i'm trying to grab and then put all the reference away and then draw uh, you know from that from that memory of what i was feeling out of the reference but it's again, it's it's using reference properly, you know. And I, and again, I'm not trying to sit and you know go over here and say like this is original art. I just sitting here saying you know I just want to draw and have fun and learn something. And so I take things that you know move me and and I analyze it. And it's not again, I, you know, if somebody says uh, um, oh you use a light table to trace things. Again, I go if it helps somebody to learn something you know, and they, and they use it properly, you know, it's just a tool. You know, I, I watch a lot of people that are traditional, they go, I don't use a computer because, you know, you know, you're not as mindful of it. And it's true, you know, but they won't ever touch digital or, you know, vice versa. So again, when you're looking at reference, how I look at reference, I like letting people know I use reference. Uh, I, to a point where, you know, um, I have Pinterest, you can go find me on Pinterest. And I, I keep all my reference there, but I stop uh, sharing it with people because I notice a lot of people like, you know, they go, well, I'll use what he finds rather than look for yourself and find that reference. If you don't have a, a, a folder of things that inspire you, you know, you're doing yourself a disservice. And so to me, I like sharing that part of it because, again, I, you know, didn't get my foot in the door until I was 33 because I always thought I had to come out of my head to be original. <laughs> Hopefully that answered. <laughs> Yes, yes, Hopefully that answered that like a ton of other questions too. Um, I know. Um, <laughs> so, um, since you do a lot of stylized portraits, like how do you bring in dynamic and movement into your portraits? 
right? So that was one of the biggest things for me. Um, again, when I when I made the decision to be an artist, um, a lot of the guys that inspired me, um, I first started um, being enamored with cartoons, you know, like the Saturday morning cartoons. So things like um, I was really inspired by uh, like Bruce Timm's uh, uh, Justice League and Superman and Batman, especially like the, the female characters, because again, you know, if you can't control those lines and shapes, uh, you know, I don't care, you know, how round you make boobs, you'll still lose this feminine thing to it, right? And so to me, I always go to the feminine because there's this appeal there. It's really hard to capture. So um, by having that goal, one of the things I knew is like, I want to be able to make, you know, super long lines, you know, super, you know, uh, gestural, right? And so, you know, getting that, uh, straight curve kind of feel. And so um, things that I would do just practicing is, you know, do these kind of things, right? Like I would, I would write in a journal, like a uh, neat cursive handwriting, you know, three pages just to get conditioned. And I noticed I went from just using my wrist to moving down into my elbow and then using my shoulder. And then when I started getting into life drawing, I started realizing why they were drawing so big is, is getting that motion. And so to me, that was my goal. So if it's your goal um, to get that kind of thing, then first off, see somebody, look for somebody who does that exact thing that you want to do, and then just try to emulate it. And you'll start listening to the decisions that they're making, right? And by having a, you know, uh, a kind of, um, you know, uh, a path to take, then you can hold yourself accountable. Are you achieving that thing and, and not stopping until you get it? So again, I would copy a lot of Bruce Tim stuff, um, Ben Caldwell, because I loved his shapes, um, Otto Schmidt, um, a lot of a lot of the guys who I thought could handle that female form and get those long lines and those um, feminine shapes. You know, I, I really, because it was my goal, I wanted to be able to be more expressive with my drawing. And then, um, Learning animation also helped with that, to look at what the body could do, you know, um, was eye-opening for me, you know, because I learned it 3D and I really want to get to the point where I'm, you know, I feel like I'm good enough to draw 2D. <laughs> so hopefully that answered that. I will keep rambling, yeah. dang it. <laughs> Joanna needs to it's go to fun. bed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we do two more questions. Okay, um, two more questions. Yes. So how do you decide how much to exaggerate versus how much to keep in proportion with the portrait? Oh, man. And that's why for these kind, that's why I'm saying like these portraits that I'm doing that I'm posting up online. These are places where I uh, I test those things out. Right. So I could come in here and, and, and say, uh, OK, the eyes are important. Like, how large can I make them? Right. You're if this is something you need to test out, then then test them out like you go in there and, and say, you know, well, the eyes are, well, I want to make them large. I want to, uh, I'm, I'm going to, and see, you know, because like as an animator, a lot of the times it was, you know, they would tell me, you know, push it as far as you can as an animator and then, and then uh, scale back, right? Then scale back um, and then see, see how it feels. There's nothing wrong with it. That's why I go, it's how we put pressure on ourselves when we're creating stuff. Again, these are just my practice. So most of the times, if things that people won't see, um, again, like I said, like with even with the shadow down there, it's like I like that. And so, but over time, I never understood like core shadow and bounce light and all that crap. That stuff went out my head. I was like, oh, it's too technical. But I, I got a feeling, and I was like, I like that feel. And I'd look at it and see it in other paintings, like how people would handle that core shadow or 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 how somebody handles a shape. And then um, I will section that shape off as I'm studying something. And just don't try to think of the whole picture, but take that section and then go, where can I exaggerate? Let me push, pull and think. And again, every time I tackle a drawing, I have different mindsets from all the different areas that I've been learning. So at one moment I'll think like a sculptor, uh, another moment I'll think like a, a painter, another moment I'll, I'll think like a graphic designer. And so it's bringing these kind of experiences into your art that helps you make those choices, right? And and get you comfortable with like um, exploring. And that, I think that's the best part of uh, being an artist is just seeing how far you can push yourself um, without being cliche, you know, like what you think, like just not going to exactly what you see, 
but you know, where can you challenge yourself? You know, and then find that find that subject because again, portraits. Um, I, I try to tell my uh, figure drawing class. I didn't do a figure drawing until I was forty, and then to teach it was like even more weird because I was going like, I have no idea about uh, anatomy, but I know what the body can do, and I know for as long as I've been observing it for, I know where I can exaggerate stuff. And so um, you just got to put it to practice, you know, and put it in a place where you're not going to be so frustrated that you're willing to deep dive deep. And that's why I take a, just the one subject. I can learn all kinds of different things. So, uh, you know, experiment. Don't be afraid of it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, right, Joanna, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> you're doing great. You're doing fantastic. <laughs> so one, one last question. One last like, question. how do you encourage your students or beginning artists to have an you can do it mentality? Let's do it. I am going to elevate because this is where I live. Those are the <laughs> questions I love. Some somebody must have knew. Somebody knew me, right? So, <laughs> so to me, um, again, I call my stuff poop. It's Dukes. It's poop. But again, um, if you if you go onto my social media, I always end every post with keep on keeping on. And this is not for anybody else because nobody got to see the suffering that I went through. Um, you know, in all the dark spots, there was, I didn't have a whole lot of um, support going up. There wasn't a whole lot of people like me that was doing art. I didn't, you know, but when I made the decision to do it, I was so excited and I was so, um, because I'd waited so long and um, I didn't want that what if. I wanted, to, I wanted to be able to give my wife, you know, that she could be proud of me, you know, that, you know, it was hard you know, getting married and going, I have no value. I'm not adding anything to anything. But what I loved was art. And I always, uh, I really didn't own up to that. And I always felt bad. And so when I embraced art, I'm super excited about it. I don't, I share it freely because it's, it's, I've got a chance to see who I am in my art, to see my decisions, because that's all art is. It's what do you want that line to mean to you? What do you want that shape? Is it soft? Is it hard? It's this, but it's just the choice, right? It's, you know, um, as I draw, I don't think of past or future. I just, I'm in the now. I'm just sitting here enjoying it. And the thing is, I get to the end, I'm like, ah, it's poop. That's crap. I didn't do it as well. But when I look at it truly, it's it's something that's supposed to make me feel good. And, and so we, we, you know, you, I tell my students, there's the logical mindset and there's the one, the heart part that we all start off the heart part that, you know, the dreamer that says and says, Oh man, I want this feeling. And then we say, well, we want to make it a career or we want to do something serious with it. And all of a sudden the mind takes, well, let me take over. Let's make this logical and take all these steps. And again, I found myself when I was at the studios, I was sitting here going like I'm miserable and how could I be miserable doing something I love? And so when I when I saw my daughter when she was first born and I went home to be this artist, I really got a chance to look at what it really, I went back to what it meant to me. And it was, again, I look and I go, I love it. I do it without anybody else telling me to do it. And so, and I do it like breathing. And so to me, I know that there were a lot of artists, they, that's where they start. And it's like, I want this thing, I wanna be better, but you never really define what better it is. And so the thing is, is it's like, um, if you can start and celebrate, you know, hey, I did art. I did. I'm celebrating right now that I did this fucking seminar, because again, <laughs> it was not something that I I thought I could do. And I don't think I, I'm like, regardless if I did it perfect or well, I did it. And so I, you know, after I finish this, I'm gonna go celebrate, because it's it's the part that I'm has made my life more magical. I've met so many beautiful people, um, and I say to you, I say, what kind of experience do you want as an artist? And I tell my students, I go, if you look at it, you, you are the, the, the captain of your ship, right? And even though that I'm sitting here giving information, um, you have to regurgitate that information and make it important to you. Any information you get is you saying, this is important to me. And that's the beauty of it is, is you get to recognize that you are a part of the process. You are the main ingredient in your art. And that is a beautiful thing. So that's where I live, right? I suck at everything else, but art makes me happy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Joanna. See? No. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be that, was, that was a beautiful finish. That, that could not have been a better lesson for, right. for everyone here, right. I think. Thank you very much for my end. I, I love you guys. You guys are the best. Thanks for putting up with me.
All right, Mel, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. That was absolutely wonderful. I, uh, I learned a lot. I'm sure everyone else learned a lot. Um, and uh, thank you so much for your time once again. Uh, for more information on Clip Studio, please uh, go visit us at clipstudio.net forward slash en or at graphicsly.com. And for more information about Mel and just to follow him and see what he's up to, please go to his social media sites. Um, you'll see him right there uh, on the screen, mel.milton.927 at Facebook, and then Mel made book Dukes for Instagram, and then his Twitch handle as well as his, uh, his website are available there. And with that, Mel, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. And again, I, uh, I hope that I brought some value to people today. Um, if I did for one person, it's been a success. And um, I'm glad I got the opportunity. I love you guys. Take care. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care.